Happy Resurrection Sunday, brothers and sisters. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 12 says, Now if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say there is no resurrection of the dead? Acts 17, verse 18, And also some of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers were conversing with him. Some were saying, What would this idle babbler wish to say? Others, he seems to be a proclaimer of strange deities, because he was preaching Jesus and the resurrection. Acts 17, verse 32, Now when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some began to sneer, but others said, we shall hear you again concerning this. Acts 26, verse 8. Why is it considered incredible among you people if God does raise the dead? 1 Corinthians 1, 23. But we preach Christ crucified, to Jews a stumbling block, and to Gentiles foolishness. In Hebrews eleven nineteen, 19. Abraham considered that God is able to raise people even from the dead for which he also received Isaac back as a type. Now the question Paul asks in the verses of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 12 through 19, explains what prompted him to write the chapter on the resurrection. Paul now proceeds in verses 12 through 19 to show the logical consequences that would follow if Christ truly had not been raised from the dead. He will clearly demonstrate that such heresy undermines the entire foundation of the gospel. Now here's the summary of the results if Christ had not been raised from the dead. Number one, there is no resurrection at all. Two, our preaching is in vain. Three, your faith is in vain. Four, they are false witnesses. Five, not even Christ has been raised. Six, your faith is worthless. Seven, you are still in your sins. Eight, those who have died have gone. And nine, we are of all men most to be pitied. Now verse 13 says, But if there is no resurrection of the dead, not even Christ has been raised. Paul will now proceed to logically argue that the truth of the resurrection of all believers was absolutely crucial, and to deny this foundational truth would have a significant consequence. In 1957, Lieutenant David Steves walked out of California's Sierra Nevada mountains 54 days after his Air Force trainer jet had disappeared. He told of an unbelievable tale of how he had lived in a snowy wilderness after parachuting from his disabled plane. By the time he showed up alive, he had already been declared officially dead. When further search failed to turn up the wreckage, a hoax was suspected, and Steves was forced to resign under a cloud of doubt. More than 20 years later, however, his story was confirmed when a troop of Boy Scouts discovered the wreckage of his plane. Another survival story from centuries ago is still controversial. A man by the name of Jesus Christ walked out the Judean wilderness making claims a lot of people found difficult to believe. He was later executed and pronounced dead. But three days later, he showed up alive, and there have been skeptics ever since. Verse 14 of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 says, And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain. Your faith is also in vain. Paul's second conclusion, if Christ's resurrection were not true, is that the good news would be bad news. Apart from the resurrection, Jesus could not have conquered sin or death or hell. And those three great evils would forever be man's conquerors. If there was no resurrection, the hall of the faithful in Hebrews chapter 11 would instead be the hall of the foolish. Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Sarah, Moses, Rahab, David, the prophets, and all the others would have been faithful for nothing. They would have been mocked, scourged, imprisoned, stoned, afflicted, ill-treated, and put to death completely in vain. All believers of all ages would have believed for nothing, lived for nothing, and died 
for nothing. Verse 15 says, Moreover, we are even found to be false witnesses of God, because we testified against God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if in fact the dead are not raised. If the apostles, the prophets, and the New Testament writers lied about the heart of the gospel, why should they be believed about anything else? Why should their moral teachings be considered inspired and lofty if they so blatantly falsified their teaching about Jesus' resurrection? All New Testament truth stands or falls together based on the resurrection. Not only that, but those witnesses would have testified, preached, and taught a lie for which they were maligned, beaten, imprisoned, and often martyred. Such self-sacrifice, however, is not the stuff of which charlatans are made. People do not die to preserve a lie. Arnold comments, If the resurrection is not true, then Christianity is a pipe dream, a hoax, a mirage, and a bunch of wishful thinking by deluded people. Take out the resurrection of Jesus, and there is nothing left on which to rest faith. Only the decomposing corpse of a Jewish carpenter turned rabbi. In the book of Acts, the apostles declared the resurrection of Christ with great authority and power. Acts makes mention of the resurrection 145 times. It was the focal point of the early church preaching. The message was, He has risen. We have seen him. He is Lord and Savior. If the resurrection is not true, then the apostles were the world's greatest liars. If there is no resurrection, they cannot be considered trustworthy, honorable and sincere men, but deceivers. Verse 16 goes on to say, For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. Now a dead Savior is really not a Savior, because he could not give life that he himself did not possess. This shows how far afield was the reasoning of the Corinthians. But the empty tomb is the foundation on which our faith is built. Jesus was buried in a borrowed tomb because he would not be needing it for very long. The tomb was secured by Roman officials with a seal and a heavy boulder, making it nearly impossible to open. Then guards were assigned to keep watch for fear the disciples would try to steal the body and pretend he had risen as he had promised. Everyone was familiar with Jesus' prediction, even though no one understood exactly what it meant. The guards were an extra precaution requested by the Jewish leaders in effort to silence forever the new teachings Jesus had introduced into their culture. They figured that once the leader was dead and gone, the fervor of his followers would die down and things could go back to the way they had been. Verse 17 says, And if Christ had been not raised, your faith is worthless and you are still in your sins. John 8 also says, Then he said to them again, I go away and you will seek me and you will die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. So the Jews were saying, Surely he will not kill himself, will he? Since he says, Where I am going, you cannot come. And he was saying to them, You are from below, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. Therefore I said to you that you will die in your sins. For unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. Acts 13, 38-39 also says, Therefore, let it be known to you, brethren, that through him forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you, and through him everyone who believes is freed from all things, from which you could not be freed through the law of Moses. David Guzik says we can follow Paul's logic point by point. Number one, if there is no principle of resurrection, then Jesus did not rise from the dead. If Jesus did not rise from the dead, then death has power over him and defeated him. If death has power over Jesus, he is not God. If Jesus is not God, he cannot offer a complete sacrifice for sins. If Jesus cannot offer 
a complete sacrifice for sins, our sins are not completely paid for before God. If my sins are not completely paid for before God, then I am still in my sins. Therefore, if Jesus has not risen, he is unable to save. Christ's resurrection is more than a fact of history. It's the proof of our salvation. Verse 18 says, Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. Arnold comments, If Christ be not risen, then all of our loved ones who have gone on to be with the Lord, or that we thought went to be with the Lord, whom we had hoped to meet again, we will never see again. Our children, our parents, our relatives, our friends, who have died have all perished if there is no resurrection. Because the resurrection is true, we can perish the thought of perishing forever. Lastly, verse 19. If we have hoped in Christ in this life only, we are of all men most to be pitied. In essence, Paul is saying, if the resurrection is not true, we are far more to be pitied than even non-believers. Without the resurrection, Christianity would be pointless, and anyone who believes in it should be pitied. Without the resurrection, there would be no gospel, no salvation message to believe, no forgiveness of sins, and no hope of a meaningful life, either now or after death. MacArthur says, To have hoped in Christ in this life only would be to teach, preach, suffer, sacrifice, and work entirely for nothing. If Christ is still dead, then he not only cannot help us in regard to the life to come, but he cannot help us now if he cannot grant us eternal life. He cannot improve our earthly life. If he is not alive, where would be our source of peace, joy, or satisfaction now? The Christian life would be a mockery, a charade, a tragic joke. In conclusion, since Christ is risen, then our preaching is not useless and empty. The apostles are true witnesses who can be trusted. Our sins have been atoned for and we are forgiven. Death has not triumphed over our loved ones and we will see them again. And life has become meaningful and full of purpose. Furthermore, since the resurrection is true, then the Christian is the most envied person on the face of the earth. For when he or she dies, there will be certainty that the soul and spirit go immediately to be with Christ and we will return to unite with the resurrected body, then the resurrected and glorified body will be with Christ for all eternity. This concept of resurrection can only bring hope, encouragement, and anticipation of the blessed event. And the Christian can say, O oh death, where is your victory? O oh death, where is your sting? Maranatha. Maranatha.